James, you are going to tell us about a role-playing game. I am. This was one that I adored back in the 90s. Go on. And then it turns out that very, very few people agreed with me on this one. Mm. So the role-playing game is Dragonlance Fifth Age. So the Dragonlance franchise was made for Dungeons & Dragons back in the 80s with a series of adventures and a series of novels. And the novels very quickly became far more popular than the Dungeons & Dragons world. Part of the reason for this is that if you've read the books, you've seen the main characters solve all the problems in this world. And there's a sense of what story is left in it for me after these people have saved the world so many times. So the uh, role-playing game line started off by doing the adventures that you read in the novels. The adventures started off coming out first, but the novels quickly caught up, and I think were also a lot more accessible. It's much easier to read three paperbacks than it is to play through a 12-adventure series. Once the role-playing games had caught up with that, they then had why not try doing other small stories as the main characters? Why not have your original characters clean up the little messes that the main characters left behind? None of this is really very appealing. No. So then they even created a whole new continent on the other side of the world, which is very interesting, but no one really cared about. Hmm. So it was decided back in 1996 that the Dragonlance world needed a big new push. And so the idea came down from management that they would create a brand new role-playing game, taking its influence from some of the more indie games that were around at that time. They're not very indie by today's standards necessarily, but at the time this was pretty experimental stuff. And while they were making Fifth Age, meanwhile, the original authors of the first trilogy of novels, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, came back and wrote a sequel to their original trilogy, in which they basically destroyed the entire world. (laughs) And so during the development of the role-playing game, the authors suddenly found out that all of the gods in the world were gone, the magic was gone, that huge areas had been destroyed or (laughs) devastated as a result, and so they had to come up with new solutions to this. And so what happens in Fifth Age is that basically the timeline has been set forward 25 years The Dragonlance world is a very generic fantasy one, but now suddenly there are giant dragons everywhere ruling everything. If you know our home game Dragon Princes, you might see a little bit of a love letter to Dragonlance in there. And so now new heroes have to rise up and face the challenges. And so the new system, instead of using dice, uses a deck of cards. Players have a hand of cards, and so instead of rolling, you choose the card that you want to play for your action. It features, uh, probably my favourite mechanic, is rather than having lists of spells, instead there's tables that you consult and you can invent spells on the fly based on what you want them to do, how long you want to spend casting them, and so on, which gives you a huge amount of flexibility. And there's a whole new time period that needs new heroes, your heroes, to save the day. There were a couple of problems with it, though. (laughs) (laughs) You don't say. You don't say. Well, the first one is that I think a lot of the fans weren't ready for this. You can find a lot of reviews from the time where people say, where are the dice? Yeah. Uh, What are these cards doing? There were games like Castle Falkenstein, which is another one that I talk about a bit, which had introduced having cards as a mechanic. And there were games like Ars Magica, where you could create your spells on the fly. But these were, well, they weren't Dungeons and Dragons, which is the big mainstream game and this was TSR the big company playing in that ballpark and so I think for a lot of people the rules were a little bit unusual also there are a few places where it feels like they could have done with another playthrough oh oh that's a pity some of the mechanics particularly if you try to do something and someone is trying to stop you it is very very hard to succeed so that's a bit of a problem very easy to house rule Another problem, and I think this is probably the big one, though, is how much the world changed. Oh, yeah. Now, with any sort of fantasy world, it needs to have problems so that players can solve them. If everything is perfect, then there's really not much of a story. And I think that in setting up 
all of the and accommodating all of the changes that had come from the novels and in making some new challenges for the players fifth age changed too much about the world and too many of the things that people associated with dragon lance which wasn't necessarily their fault wound up getting stripped out like the magic that's tied to the three moons that was all gone like mm. the gods that was gone and that was things that got passed down to them because the left hand and the right hand weren't talking to each other yeah Another thing that I think was a, a funny problem with it, or a, a strange decision, this line got very extensively supported. It lasted for four years, 1996 to 2000, in which they released 15 supplements for it. TSR, particularly at this point during its decline, had a pretty bad reputation for throwing more money at things that were going wrong. One of the things that they commonly say was a problem was uh, boxed sets for role-playing games, cost more to make than they made when they sold them. The Dragonlance for Thage line is almost exclusively box sets. Oh, no. <laughs> but also, <sighs> in their first supplements that they released, each supplement, there was one for the fighter types, and one for the rogues, and one for the wizards, and one for the healers, and then one for dragons. And each one had with it a chapter of an adventure. Mm. And this was meant to be the big adventure for the new age. And you could read the entire plot of this novelised in the tie-in novels that came out. The exact same problem that you had with original Dragonlance. You'd think they would learn, honestly. They did eventually with 3rd edition, but that's a story for another time. So as a result, the adventures feel incredibly railroaded. Mm. You are pretty much forced into playing with the characters that they provide for you. Oh. And you could just read the novels to find out how the whole thing turns out. Oh. It's a big shame. Anyway, it lasted for four years, like I said. After two years, I think they realised that something was up because from two years on, every book was dual-statted so that it had rules for Fifth Age and also for Dungeons & Dragons. Also, the amount of books that got released after those two years diminished greatly. There's just a couple of adventures which actually adapt that um, novel that blows up the world that I mentioned before, Dragons of Summer Flame. Uh, a, re a reprint of the original 12 novel series and one or two other things, but there's not much. And it's a real pity because if you look at the actual rules, yes, it needs a few house rules to make it work, but if you look at the actual rules, it's a really sweet little system. Some of the supplements released for it are excellent. The bestiary that they wrote is entirely in character, with two characters from the Dragonlance novels mm. talking about all the monsters. One is a scholar and the other one's an adventurer, and so they've got different perspectives. And I think it's well worth checking out. And you can check it out on Drive Through RPG, oh. which has got scans of everything, except the cards oh. that power the entire system, without which you cannot play the game. Great. Have people done fan scans? I am sure if you look around, I believe that you can find some fan scans in places or fan recreations where they've left out the trademark material and just given you just what you need to be able to play. Wonderful. 